Okay, so this will be our new lesson. We will now have chapter 4, Development of Single Actuator Circuits. Now, before we discuss this, let's have a review on what are the previous lessons we have learned. First is, we have learned what is pneumatics. So, just a brief review. Pneumatic system is a system that uses compressed air to transmit and control energy. Now, when you design now this pneumatic system, it follows a certain structure and signal flow for pneumatic system. You have your energy supply, input elements, processing elements, control elements, and power components. We also have learned the use of air service units for our supply air or energy element. Now, from the actuator, it will go through filter, pressure regulator, and lubricator before it goes to our system. We have also learned if the different types of valves that is used in a pneumatic system. We have learned how to name directional valves and the symbols and functions of non-return valves, flow control valves, pressure regulating valves, and shut off valves. And lastly, we have learned what are the use of actuators and the types of actuators. You have your linear and rotary actuators. So by knowing this one, we will now go through the application and how to design the following system. Now, first is you need to know what is the difference between direct versus indirect actuation. So basically, we have here a system having the direct and indirect actuation. So let's just go through them one by one. So if you have remember, you need your energy supply and then your input element. So obviously, for the sake of the example, I have removed now your processing and control element. So, diretso na siya sa actuator natin ngayon. Now, from here, makikita natin na direct actuation ng isang system if from the input element, it will go directly to your actuator. While in your indirect actuation, from your input element, it will go through first to your control or final control element and then the final control element will now go to your actuator. That is the only difference. So again, yung difference nila, yung direct actuation, diretsyong pumapasok from your input yung papunta sa actuator. Pag indirect, from your input, pupunta muna siya sa final control element and then pupunta siya sa actuator. Now, bakit kailangan natin um, maintindihan kung ano yung difference nila? Obviously, using direct actuation is much more cheaper and simpler in design. But using indirect actuation have its own advantages. First is, in this type of system, makikita nyo na may sariling supply yung control element. In that case, we can say na hindi nag-vary yung pressure or yung um, air supply ng actuation. Just for example, we have one bar of pressure coming from your direct actuation system. Yung direct actuation system, dadaan muna yung air pressure sa input element at kung sakali pwedeng magkaroon ng leakages yan at yung datatik na lang sa actuation or sa actuator is 0.5 bar. But in the case of indirect actuation, since it has its own source at yung dadaanan lang niya ngayon is yung final control element, we can now safely say na mas mababa yung pagbaba ng air pressure at almost constant na ngayon yung mapuprovide natin na energy sa actuator. Okay? Also, using this type of system will allow you to have a further operating input. Meaning, if you have a control system, your input should be inside your control system. And then, it should control yung final control element which is outside ng control system which is nasa mga machine. In that case, since hindi na kaya ngayon ng, na mas mahabang pipe, papunta sa input, papunta sa actuator, since pag mahaba ang pipe, may mas malaking chance na magkaroon ng leakages, gumagamit na ngayon tayo ng indirect actuation. Okay? So hopefully, you have understand the difference between direct and indirect actuation. Next is, we will now go through end versus or valves. So basically, you will see here two, two similar system. Now again, let's check yung flow signal nila. First is, sa pinakamababa, dapat makikita niyo yung mga energy supply. So as you can see here, you have your air supply, 
your air service unit, and then you have your emergency button or your on and off button. This is all already considered as your energy supply. Next is your input element. Your input element will be your switches. As you can see, you have your switch 1 and switch 2. Switch 1 and switch 2. Next will be our processing element. The processing element is mainly composed of your end and or valve. And then next, it will go through your final control element. And then your final control element will eventually um, uh, control now your directional valve. Or no, uh, the actuation, actuator. So yung actuator dito is what we call double acting cylinder. Okay, so almost similar na sila. Yung pagkakaiba lang nila is yung gamit nilang processing element. So going through it, yung end valve or what we call dual pressure valve is nagpa-function siya as a valve na kung saan dapat yung dalawang switch which is connected to the valve should be on in, on its own on position para magkaroon ng output. So dapat dito, dapat naka-on itong switch 1 at dapat naka-on din tong switch 2 para magkaroon kayo ng output at maitulak nyo ngayon yung final control element. And then, pag nag-change na ng position yung final control element, you will now have a um, actuation on your cylinder or mag-extend na ngayon yung piston nyo. So, para mas maintindihan natin, let's go through the simulator. Okay, so we will now do the system dun sa end valve para makita nyo kung paano siya ginagawa sa simulator. So, of course, you will start now with your energy supply. From your energy supply, you will now have your um, air source and then pagkatapos ng air source or compressor, dadaan siya ngayon sa air service unit. Your air service unit now uh, will now go to your emergency switch or directional valve. Of course, kailangan meron siya ang on and off switch. So, it's either manually operated on both sides or maglalagay kayo ng latch switch. So, either way, parehas lang yan. So, take note, 3-2-way yung ginagamit natin because it is a simple on and off function. Then, after that one, we will now go to the in um input element your input element is two switches so hindi na natin gagayahin ng diretso yung in design so you have your input 1 and input 2 so galing dito pupunta ngayon sa parehas na uh, mula sa input source pupunta siya ngayon sa um source ng hangin okay so pag pinindot niya yan magchi-change ng position and then uh, the air will now be able to flow so baliktad so initial position dapat is naka off Ayan, dapat naka-off yung initial position. Next is, kailangan pumunta ngayon sa processing element. Your processing element now will be your end valve or two pressure valve or dual pressure valve. Now, in this case, dapat, yung dalawang input, dapat naka-on pa sila parehas para magkaroon ng output. And then the output will directly go to your directional valve. Yung directional valve na yun is yung tinatawag natin na final control element. Now, this is the trick. Kapag yung final control element na ginamit is 3 to wave valve, meaning the actuator will now be, or the linear actuator will now be a single acting cylinder. Otherwise, kapag double acting cylinder ngayon yung kukontrol natin, dapat yung final control element natin is 5 to wave. Okay? Dapat yan yung makapartner. 3 to wave valve, single acting cylinder, and then 5 to wave valve, double acting cylinder. So just in this case, yung gagamitin natin is yung single acting cylinder. So, from the processing element, pupunta siya ngayon sa um, final control element. So, of course, dapat pneumatically actuated and then the other one is spring return. And then, the source now of the final control element will come from hindi, dun sa kabila, sa taas ng emergency switch. Para kapag nag-off tayo ng emergency switch, mamamatay din yung valve, yung final control valve, okay? So kung makikita nyo, lahat ng source manggagaling dito sa emergency switch. So pag in-off natin, mamamatay lahat or, or mam mag mawawala yung pressure dun sa mga valves. And then from the final control element, pupunta siya, na siya ngayon sa single acting cylinder. So if you play simulation, so dapat naka-on yung machine. And then as you can see, the pressure will go through each valves. And then pag pinindot nyo, yung isang switch is hindi nagkakaroon ng output yung processing element. So dapat sabay. So para maging sabay, just print, press or shift para ma-stay nyo, nyo ngayon yung um, pag-press dun sa mga switch. Okay, so as you can see, nag-iba na yung position yung final control element and the source of the final control element will come from directly sa energy supply and then the pressure will now push now the piston 
to extend. And then, kapag nawala na yung pressure or tinanggal nyo na yung kamay nyo kahit sa isang switch, babalik na ngayon yung um, linear actuator since it is um, spring return. So, pag wala ng pressure or air pressure coming from the final control element, bumabalik na mag-isa yung piston. Okay? So, that is for end valve. Okay? So, for your air valve naman, this is also called the sure shuttle valve. And the same way, as you can see, you have now your switches that is going through your processing. Ang difference lang ngayon is kapag core valve, you only need one signal coming from either switch so that you can now have your output. Now, we can see this kapag pinalitan natin yung ginawa nating circuit into from end valve or dual pressure valve to our valve or shuttle valve. Okay, so let's go to the simulation. Okay, so pag pinalitan natin ngayon, so let's stop the simulation. Papalitan natin yung processing element niya into shuttle valve. Okay, shuttle valve and then you will now have a function na kung saan kahit ano yung ipress nyo, you will now have an output to extend now your cylinder. So again, dapat na-on yung machine and then kapag pinindot nyo is nag extend yung cylinder. So either one, nag extend yung cylinder kahit sabay nyo halos sabay nyo uh, pindutin, nag extend yung cylinder. So that is basically the function of your shuttle valve. Now, a function now of Dito, pwede nyo i-double click ngayon. So, let's stop. Double click ngayon yung mga directional valve so that you can see the configuration kung paano configure So, please see through dun sa simulation. I-install nyo na ngayon sa mga laptops nyo so that you can be familiarized dun kung paano palitan yung mga um, directional valve, ano yung mga properties kapag uh, pinik nyo ngayon yung mga linear actuators and the um, directional valve, shuttle valves, and yung mga FRL or your air service units. Okay, so paano nyo naman ngayon lalagyan ng mga symbol or yung mga tag name, yung mga components. And paano nyo ngayon lalagyan ng mga tag name? It is now located in your insert and then miscellaneous send and text and then lalagyan nyo na lang ng tag name. Ano yung tag name? Um, this is 1S1 or yan. Importante ba yan? Importante yan. Kapag nagtidesign kayo, you need to know kung ano yung mga tag name ng mga components so that kapag bibili na kayo ng components, alam nyo yung mga designated tag names at kung ilan ba yung mga components na binili and so, yun, iisa-isahin nyo na lang yan. Also, you can have insert miscellaneous and then parts list. So, pag pinindot nyo yan, makikita nyo na dito yung mga components na ginamit nyo ngayon sa buong system. So, as you can see, meron kayong compressed air supply, you have your air service unit, you have four three-two-way valve with push button, though hindi ito yung Isasagot nyo later on kapag pinalista ko yung mga component list, dapat yung, direct, yung, yung mahabang name ngayon ng directional valve, you have your one single acting cylinder and shuttle valve. If you want, you can go to accumulated part list and then makikita nyo na apat yung directional valve, isang single acting, isang shuttle valve, isang air service, and so on. So this will be helpful later on kung um, sa design nyo, kailangan nyo malaman yung total parts na ginamit nyo sa pag-design ng isang system. Okay? Okay, so now we will now have an example. So, a double pilot valve should be fitted for the control of the cylinder. If the cylinder is to retract on reaching its fully extended position, roller level valves should be used as limit valves to confirm that this position has been reached. So, let's go through them one by one. So, sabi niya, a double pilot valve should be fitted for the control of a cylinder. When we say double pilot, it means you will need pneumatically controlled yung final control element. So, obviously, since yung ginamit niya na dito is pneumatic, pneumatically actuated, yun yung double pilot valve. And then, the cylinder, you only have two choices. You have your single acting and double acting cylinder. So, in this case, yung ginamit niya is double acting cylinder. And yung sabi niya, kapag fully extended, extended na yung piston, is automatically magre-return yung cylinder or yung piston through roller lever valve. So, as you can see, the the condition para bumalik yung cylinder is dapat ma-actuate niya ngayon yung roller lever valve. So, yung extended position naman, you will use two input. So, it's you will now have switch 1 or switch 2. So, hindi siya sinabi sa problem. Pero dito, nilagay na pag pinindot ko yung switch 1 is mag-extend 
and pag pinindot ko yung switch to, mag-extend din. So take note, we are not already dealing with spring return. So kung ano yung magiging position ngayon ng mga valves, hindi siya gagalaw hanggang merong opposition force na magpapagalaw sa mga position ng valve. So in this case is kapag pinindot niyo yung switch 1, magpapalit ng position yung final control element and then your air now will push the cylinder to its extended position. And then kapag fully extended na ngayon yung cylinder, it will actuate now your roller lever. This roller lever is the same as the roller lever here ng directional valve. So, parang i-imagine nyo, yung roller na yan is nakaposition siya na tatamaan or sasagasaan siya ng piston kapag nag-extend. So, in that case, at na-move na niya ngayon yung position ng roller lever, it will now send a signal to change the position of your final control element to its initial position. And in that case, it will retract now your um, double acting cylinder. So, let's see it kapag sinimulate natin. Okay, so I have now bring out the components we will need. So, yung gagawin natin is i-connect na natin. So, i-connect muna natin yung mga input element to the source. And then, yung final control element, i-connect din natin sa source. Okay, and then, the input, yung two input na dadaan ngayon sa processing element, and then the output of the processing element will go to your final control element. So, babaguhin natin yung final control element into your pneumatically actuated on both sides. And then, yung isang directional valve, papalitan natin siya into a roller lever. Ayan. So, yung mangyayari dyan, yung isang part ng output ng final control element will actuate now the, the extension part or pag dumaan yung hangin dyan, mag extend ngayon yung cylinder. And then, the other one will go through the retraction or magbabalik sa retracted position yung cylinder. So, as you can see here, makikita nyo na um, at its initial position, nakaretract kasi yung hangin, pinupush niya dito. So, yung hangin, nag pinupush niya yung piston into its retracted position. Okay? And then next, dapat ilalagay natin tong roller para pag fully extended na yung cylinder is madetect niya. So, yung gagamitin natin is yung distance rule. So, pag nilagay natin yung distance rule, maglalagay tayo ng label, this is now your switch tree. And, mag actuate siya sa extended position. So, you will now have here millimeter 0 to 100 and yung end position niya is yung 100. So, 100 yung ilalagay natin. And yung beginning niya is 100. So, at a certain point lang siya, masesense. Ayan. So, makikita nyo na kapag napunta sa extended position or at its full extension yung piston, the switch tree will now detect the cylinder. So, in that case, gagawin natin yung switch tree is yung lever roller. Okay? So, in that case, pag na-detect niya na ngayon, mag activate na ngayon yung cylinder natin. So, pressing simulate, kapag prenes natin ng isang switch, dapat mag-extend and automatically siyang bumabalik. Since, um, pag fully extended na ngayon yung piston, binabalik siya nung switch number 3 natin. Okay? Ayan. Okay, so hopefully you have understand kung paano ba gumagana yung system. So, let's go. Okay, so this will be our last example, which is what we call memory circuit and speed control of cylinder. So, when we say memory circuit, yun yung ginawa natin kanina. Kasi kung napapansin nyo, kapag spring return yung ginagamit natin, is bumabalik siya ngayon sa original position. So, when we have a directional valve na hindi tayo gumamit ng spring return, that is what we call memory circuit. Because it remembers kung ano yung last na signal na pinadala natin. So, for example, we press now switch number 1. It will now move the position of your final control element to its left position. And hindi na siya gagalaw until you send another signal from switch number 2 to return the to return the final control elements to its original position. Kaya siya tinatawag na memory circuit. And then next, we will now have your speed control or speed, speed controller. So you have now your one-way flow control valve. So it acts now as your auxiliary, uh, auxiliary components kung saan na ilalagay niya siya after your final control element. Now, yung ginagawa niya is kinokontrol niya ngayon yung pressure coming in and out of your um, uh, actuator. So, dito sa double acting cylinder. So, ilalagay niyo siya sa input and output para i-control niyo yung um, pag-flow nung hangin in its input and its output. Obviously, kapag tinanggal niyo yung isa dyan, yung mangyayari lang is yung makukontrol niyo lang is yung input. Kapag tinanggal niyo yung kabila, yung makukontrol niyo lang is yung 
airflow ng output. So, pag kailangan yung i-control yung um, pag-extend and ang pag-retract ng isang cylinder, you need to put to one-way flow control. Okay, simulating now the memory circuit and the speed control. We will now um, bring out our compressor. And then after the compressor, we will now have two switch, two switches. You have your switch one and switch two. And then the two switches will go to your 5-2 wave valve. Since we are using now a 5-2 wave valve, we will now use double acting cylinder as our actuator. So connecting now your input elements to your power source and connecting also your final control element to your power source, we will change now the final control element into two uh, pneumatically controlled on both sides. So, pag mag simulate na kayo, please take note of the spring return, tatanggalin nyo siya kapag memory circuit, and also take note of the initial positions of your directional valve, dapat normally, normally close normally yung mga switches. Then after that one, your input element will go to your final control element, and then your final control element will eventually control your actuator, your double acting cylinder. So in this case, tinatawag natin siyang memory circuit because when we simulate, uh, the final control element will remember the last signal that you have sent. And then of course, depende sa position ngayon ng final control element, yung magiging reaction ngayon ng inyong mga um, cylinders. It's, it will be either extended or retracted. Now going to your... Um, speed control, we will now bring out our one-way flow control valve. Now, this one-way flow control valve will be the one to control the airflow inside or going through the final control element. So, as you can see, kapag nakokontrol nyo yung airflow, makokontrol nyo rin yung speed ngayon ng inyong pag-extend or pag-retract. So, we will bring out two one-way flow control one will be for the extension, extending position, and one will for the retracting position. So, after that one, let's check, simulate. So, of course, hindi pa natin binago yung um, flow control ng ating component. So, normal, normal pa lang yung speed niya. Now, if we change now the opening level of the pressure regulator, sabihin natin 10% para drastic change yung makita natin. Pag in-extend natin, bumabagal. And then, pag na natin, bumibilis. So, as you can see, kapag ina-extend natin, the airflow will move towards the constricted area at doon na pipigil natin yung airflow. At kung saan, pag bumaba na ngayon yung airflow, mas bumabagal ngayon yung pag-extend niya. Since hindi natin binago yung kabila. Now, if we change also yung kabila, gagawin din natin 10, 10%. Of course, dapat parehas na silang babagal. Ayan. Mabagal na silang parehas. And then, pag pinalik natin yung una to 100%, the extension will be fast and then the retraction will be slow. Okay? So take note of the position of the component. Kung saan siya magiging fast, saka, saka kailan siya magiging slow. Okay, thank you. Okay, so just a summary of our lesson. I hope you have understand what is the difference between direct and indirect um, type of circuit. The next, what is the difference between end or or valves or what we call dual pressure valves versus shuttle valve on what is the application of memory circuit and how do we use now your speed control or your one-way flow control valve. So if you have any question, I hope you can um, comment down below sa lesson na to, or you can just message me through Facebook and I hope you have understand it well so that later on sa mga sa, sa next lessons natin is madali na nating uh, madidiscuss yung iba pang klase ng pneumatic design. So I hope you have learned something. Thank you for listening. God bless.